Chef Heston Blumenthal owns the famed The Fat Duck restaurant. It's been named one of the world's top restaurants for four years in a row now. Now he's putting though a very modern spin on some more historic English recipes at his new spot, which is called Simply Dinner. Heston and his head chef, Ashley Palmer Watts, are with us this morning, along with Mark Meltonville, who's the food historian at Hampton Court Palace. They all work together to create the menu for dinner. We get to sample a little bit of it this morning. Good to have all of you with us. Good morning. Good morning. And, and I should say, we were here in London in March. We knew you were coming on the show, so we went to dinner and we sampled everything, and it was delicious. Oh, thank you. We were a little apprehensive though because you have things in the menu like pigeon things we're not used to seeing yeah there's some funny old british ingredients around and i think it's actually bringing those back which is so exciting yeah and it's been, it's been a lot of fun so you and mark work together mark you work yeah. at a place called hampton court palace which is really a, a recreation of a of a tudor palace i mean it is a tudor <laughs> palace but but it's sort of set in historical we've, context we've for folks to visit the tudor kitchen so we recreated all the equipment to put into a 500 year old kitchen and now make it work again so we can take recipes from the time of henry the eighth and use the same room same ingredients, same tools and techniques to see what that food tasted like. Which has got to be fun <laughs> for you, coming from a modern kitchen. Yeah, I'm kind of doing the, the mirrored image of what, of what he's doing. So the idea for me is, I, you know, when I first met Mark, I had no idea that there was this wealth of recipes. And actually, you know, we got maligned in Europe for the quality of our mm. food in Britain in the 70s and 80s. But you go back in history, 100, 200 years, and we had food, cuisine that was the envy of, of Europe. Yeah. So. I, my idea to Mark was to take some of the, these old recipes as inspiration, mm -hmm. but use thoroughly modern techniques and knowledge to produce something that's kind of, it's a very, it's an inspiration inspired from the past. by. It's mm -hmm. not a replica. There we go. So let's start off with one of the things well, that's inspired by. This is called a, a pum, an apple. Pum, yeah, it's a, it's a French word for apple, and this is one of the dishes that uh, inspired Heston. That recipe is a good 500 years old, and people go, you know, what is it? What's this gnarly fruit in a bowl? <laughs> the whole point of this, from your chef's point of view, is to try and inspire your diner into something new. So although that looks like some sort of you know, gnarly baked fruit, maybe an apple or something, when you cut it and open, inside is a spiced pork meatball. So it's got fruit and it's got spices and meat and so on. Complete surprise. A meatball disguised as an apple. So you've taken this and created what's called meat fruit. Yes. Which has we... an interesting name. <laughs> You're basically, um, I think what fascinated me is you go back in history and you think there was no creativity. But you know, hundreds of years ago, there were no televisions, there were no sound systems, there were no computer games. So at top end, you know, if you really want to impress your friends, you do things like create illusion with food. Mm. Food mm -hmm. was much more theatrical. So that's what we've done here. So basically, this that looks like a mandarin, complete with the little dimples, is mm -hmm. actually a chicken liver parfait. So if I cut through, you can see There we there. go. So there's the, there's <laughs> really the fruit and there's the meat. I'm going to try one little bite, really because I had it once before and it's delicious <laughs> and I want to prove to everybody at home and just how good it is. We make a mandarin jelly, so it's dipped in this mandarin jelly. Mm. Just as good. <laughs> So good. It's really refined, isn't it? And the, and actually, there's a little bit of the orange flavor, which is lovely. Up next, you have a hay smoked mackerel. You're actually smoking the fish in hay. Yeah. So this is another good example of what we do at the restaurant. It's it's taking just taking inspiration from elements of dishes. So the historical element to this is actually the lemon salad here. Mm -hmm. Um, and a gentleman's relish, which I'll come on to. But the mackerel itself, we cure it with salt, lime and lemon zest with coriander and chili, not for that long, brush that off, then into one of these fish clamps, put some hay. Real hay. Basically, you just go and get this from the, from the pet shop. Yep. Put the Look fish, fillet inside. into there, pack some more hay on top of it. There we clamp go. Clamp it up and then send it to Ashley over on there the grill. On the grill. Oh, wow, look at that. Smoking it. <laughs> so the suggestion is... Have a fire extinguisher close by. <laughs> do not do this indoors. No. Don't do it indoors. <laughs> if you do, don't blame me. I'm going to take a quick bite. As you tell us, we've got about 30 seconds. I want you to tell us quickly about the pineapple there before we move on to ice cream. Okay, so this is gentleman's relish, which is an anch mm. anchovy garlic mix with a lemon salad. So it's very light and clean. Oh, it's delicious. Here, this is a tipsy cake mm -hmm. with a pineapple, but this has been roasted on mm. a spit. It's beautiful. Now, for me, just seeing, <clears throat> just seeing pineapples on a rotisserie is just fantastic. Now, I've discovered with Ash that the French call us le roast beef, mm -hmm. the roast beef. So mm -hmm. I always thought it's because they took the mick of our liking for roast beef in Yorkshire pudding. But in the 1800s, apparently, we were the leading experts in Europe on cooking meat over an open fire. So any chance to basically teach the French how to cook something from a Brit's point of view there I'm you completely go. Helpful. <laughs> so Good thing the rivalry still exists. So you've made yeah. this tipsy cake. I'm going to take a quick bite as we move on to ice cream. Mmm. Rich and flavorful. Delicious. We have a minute left. Why is ice cream so important? Okay, now, so this is a, based on, it, this is a, a basically um, 
a celebration of historical Victorian ice cream. Some liquid nitrogen there? Liquid <laughs> nitrogen. <clears throat> there was a woman called Margaret Marshall who had a cooking school in Regent Street, just down the road from the restaurant. She had seen some man demonstrate a flask, thermos flask, with liquid nitrogen in it. She thought you could use this to make ice cream, but she never did. She wrote about it. Mm -hmm. So because this was down the road from the restaurant, we thought, let's have a liquid nitrogen ice cream trolley. And this handle here is a Victorian invention as well. Ah, and hence the inspiration. So basically, you do this at the table. Uh, it should take one minute. Hopefully, we've got just enough time. We may just get it in. OK. So there uh, we then, go. Ice cream cone. This same woman invented the edible ice cream cone five really? years before the Americans thought it was at St. Louis Trade World Fair in 1905. Wait, you mean we didn't do it? Apparently not. Apparently <laughs> <laughs> not. That's and all there right. you go. That's a one minute right. liquid nitrogen ice one cream with ice some cream freeze dried cone? raspberries on top. I'm sold. <laughs> It's fantastic. Are we keeping you in England now? You may, you just may be. <laughs> Ashley, Heston, Mark, great to have all of you here. Thanks Thank for you. bringing all this fun stuff to us. It's delicious.